Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Uh, before we begin the press release, we figured it's been a long summer, and maybe we could all use just a little levity and a little humor. So we know the governor is on vacation right now, and we are predicting what his letter is going to be like when he comes home and says what I did on my summer vacation. And that's what this little PowerPoint is about. Anybody have any questions about the uh, PowerPoint? <laughs> anyway, the governor has said publicly that he has a good sense of humor. So I'm sure he's going to enjoy our version of how he spent his summer vacation. <coughs> Pardon me. But on a more serious note, we are here to kick off what we know is going to be a tough uphill battle on behalf of the women of New Jersey to maintain access to health care. This bill affects at least 40,000 women of the 136,000 now being served by the family planning centers who will be thrown off and supposedly can be taken care of just because they say so at the federally qualified health centers. That is a myth that spinning it over and over again doesn't turn it into a fact. The FQHCs themselves are on the precipice of financial disaster because partially of all those folks who were thrown off family care and now 40,000 more women who, have been th who will be thrown out of the family planning centers. Uh, I will tell you that this bill is gaining more and more enormous support in the state of New Jersey. Every major newspaper in the state has editorialized, most of them not once, but twice, but three times, about the necessity to pass this bill. The organizations that are joining and are actually beginning to run phone banks include the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, National Council of Jewish Women, the Women's Political Caucus, Women Advocating for Good Government, Catholics for Choice, and it goes on and on. The women of New Jersey are going to stand up and let their legislators know that we are not letting this go. I'm going to turn this over to my colleague Assemblywoman Linda Stender, but I just want to read to you uh, a quote from C Claire Coleman, who heads the National Family Planning and Reproductive Health Association, the national one. She said, no other governor in the United States has targeted family planning in this way. Now, the Republicans with the leadership of their governor, the Senate Majority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, thankfully, pardon me, and the Assembly Minority Leader are trying to get their caucuses in line. I have a question. Is this becoming a party position for the Republican Party? Why are the leaders, before we have even had a chance to further discuss the funding of this bill, already saying they're not going to have one vote for a veto override. 
So I question, is it now a party position? Their state chair has already said he doesn't believe that poor women should have access to birth control. Said that publicly during a meeting. Is this the standard of the state Republican Party? It is hard for me to believe that so many of those good people in the Republican caucus are going to march in lockstep and vote not to override the veto of this important issue. I know we're going to have a lot more to say, but I would like to turn it over to my uh, colleague in the Assembly who has been championing this bill on the other side of the aisle, Linda Stender. Linda. Thank you very much, Loretta, and good morning. I am very proud to stand here today with Loretta and uh, have a few laughs at the governor's expense, and, and, but also point out that um, governor is on a family vacation, and he is very fortunate to be able to go on vacation and have health care for his family. But there are a lot of people in this state that don't have taxpayer-funded health care. And for 136,000 who used it, and of the 40,000 that are totally going to be thrown off, this bill is essential. It is, in the end, I believe, about his ideology. This is not about money. I don't believe that. He found $65 million when he couldn't get the votes for the budget and he needed on the Bergen Blue Laws. He found $5 million for Senator Mike Dougherty's vote for that budget. He could find the $7.5 million if he wanted to, except of his, because of his ideology. Because if you look at it on the merits of the money, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because of the 9 to 1 match that we have from the federal government. So we're leaving that money on the table, and it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make fiscal sense at all when you know that for every dollar we don't spend, it's going to cost us another four out the door. So this isn't about money. I believe it's about his ideology, his personal beliefs. And those beliefs, based on this, are that he doesn't believe women should have birth control. And he says it's not about abortion because we know that abortion is not provided for in this bill. But let's be clear, when he vetoed this bill, he has set the state up for an increase in abortions. And I think that message needs to be heard loud and clear, because that's not what anybody wants. We want to have women allowed to have access to quality health care, to be able to get their screenings, to be able to get their birth control pills and plan for their families. That's what this is about. So if it's not about the money, but it's about the ideology. Well, we know where he stands. He's made his choices. He's turned his back on the women of the state of New Jersey. So we are now beginning the process of reaching out to the other members of the legislature who abstained or voted no on the bill on the first time. And we're going to ask them where they stand, because in the end, this is going to be a question of courage and a question of conscience. Do you believe women should have access to birth control? Do you believe that women should be able to plan for their families? Or do you believe in a public policy of barefoot and pregnant? I think that in this state, we believe that women should have access and be able to make decisions about their reproductive health. And so we're going to be reaching out to the rest of the legislature as we prepare for this override and ask them to stand courageously, which will be difficult because they're going to have to stand against the governor. And we are concerned about their level of fear of overriding the governor. We'll begin this process, this crusade, and we'll be reaching out to the women across the state, people across the state, and believe that we will have the support in the end. Thank you.